And now chapter 5 of the Antya Leela, how Pradyumna Mishra received instructions from Ramananda Roy. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sriya Taita Dadadha Sri Vashati I am infected by germs of material activity and suffering from boils due to envy. Therefore, falling in an ocean of humility, I take shelter of the great physician, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the son of Mother Shachi. All glories to Sri Nityananda Prabhu. Indeed, he is the most glorious and merciful. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Advaita Prabhu, the ocean of mercy, and to all the devotees such as Farup Damada Goswami, Gadadhar Pandit, Sri Rupa Goswami, and Sri Sanatan Goswami. One day, Pradyumna Mishra came to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, offering his respects and inquiring from him with great submission. He said, My Lord, kindly hear me. I am a crippled-minded householder, the most fallen of men. But somehow, by my good fortune, I have received the shelter of your lotus feet, which are rarely to be seen. I wish to hear topics concerning Lord Krishna constantly. Be merciful unto me and kindly tell me something about Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, I do not know about topics concerning Lord Krishna. I think that only Ramananda Rai knows, for I hear these topics from him. It is your good fortune that you are inclined to hear topics regarding Krishna. The best course for you would be to go to Ramananda Rai and hear these topics from him. I see that you have acquired a taste for hearing talks regarding Krishna. Therefore, you are extremely fortunate. Not only you, but anyone who has awakened such a taste is considered most fortunate. The Srimad Bhagavatam states, A person who properly performs his regulative duties according to Varna and Ashram, but does not develop his dormant attachment for Krishna, or awaken his taste to hear and chant about Krishna, is certainly laboring fruitlessly. Pradyumna Mishra, being thus advised by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, went to the home of Ramananda Rai. There the servant of Ramananda Rai gave him a proper place to sit down. Unable to see Ramananda Rai immediately, Pradyumna Mishra inquired from the servant, who then gave a description of Sri Ramananda Rai. There are two dancing girls who are extremely beautiful. They are very youthful and they are expert in dancing and singing. As Srila Ramananda Roy has taken these two girls to a solitary place in his garden where he is teaching and directing them to dance according to the songs he has composed for his drama. But please sit here, here, and wait for a few moments. As soon as he comes, he will execute whatever order you give him. While Pradyumna Mishra remained seated there, Ramananda Roy took the two girls to a solitary place. With his own hand, Sri Ramananda Roy massaged their bodies with oil and bathed them with water. Indeed, Ramananda Roy cleansed their entire bodies with his own hand. Although he dressed the two young girls and decorated their bodies with his own hand, he remained unchanged. Such is the mind of Srila Ramananda Roy. While touching the young girls, he was like a person touching wood or stone for his body and mind were unaffected. 
Srila Ramananda Roy used to act in that way because he thought of himself in his original position as a maidservant of the gopis. Thus, although externally he appeared to be a man, internally, in his original spiritual position, he considered himself a maidservant and considered the two girls to be gopis. The greatness of the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is exceedingly difficult to understand. Sri Ramananda Roy is unique among them all, for he showed how one can extend his ecstatic love to the extreme limit. Ramananda Roy directed the two girls how to dance and express the deep meaning of his songs to dramatic performances. He taught them how to express the symptoms of continuous, natural and transitional ecstasies with the movements of their faces, their eyes and the other parts of their bodies. Through the feminine poses and dances they were taught by Ramananda Roy, the two girls precisely exhibited all these expressions of ecstasy before Lord Jagannath. Then Ramananda Roy fed the two girls sumptuous prasad and sent them to their homes unexposed. Every day he trained the two Devadasis how to dance. Who among the small living entities, their minds always absorbed in material sense gratification, could understand the mentality of Sri Ramananda Roy? When the servant informed Ramananda Roy of Pradyumna Mishra's arrival, Ramananda Roy immediately went to the assembly room. He offered his obeisances to Pradyumna Mishra with all respect, and then, with great humility, spoke as follows. Sir, you came here long ago, but no one informed me. Therefore, I have certainly become an offender at your lotus feet. My entire home has been purified by your arrival. Kindly order me. What can I do for you? I am your servant. Pradyumna Mishra replied, I came simply to see you. Now I have purified myself by seeing your honor. Because Pradyumna Mishra saw that it was late, he did not say anything else to Ramananda Roy. Instead, he took leave of him and returned to his own home. The next day, when Pradyumna Mishra arrived in the presence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Lord inquired, Have you heard talks about Krishna from Sri Ramananda Roy? Pradyumna Mishra thereupon described the activities of Sri Ramananda Roy. After hearing about these activities, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to speak. I am a sannyasi, and I certainly consider myself renounced. But not to speak of seeing a woman, if I even hear the name of a woman, I feel changes in my mind and body. Therefore, who can remain unmoved by the sight of a woman? <laughs> it is very difficult. Everyone, please hear these topics about Ramananda Roy, although they are so wonderful and uncommon that they should not even be spoken. The two professional dancing girls are beautiful and youthful, yet Sri Ramananda Roy personally massages oil upon their bodies. He personally bathes and dresses them and decorates them with ornaments. In this way, he naturally sees and touches the private parts of their bodies. Nevertheless, the mind of Ramananda Roy never changes, although he teaches the girls how to physically express all the transformations of ecstasy. His mind is as steady as wood or stone. Indeed, it is wonderful that even when he touches such young girls, his mind never changes. The authority for such acts is the prerogative of Ramananda Roy alone, for I can understand that his body is not material, but has been completely transformed into a spiritual entity. He alone and no one else can understand the position of his mind. But I can make a guess in terms of directions from the Shastra. Srimad Bhagavatam, the Vedic scripture, gives the direct evidence in this matter. When one hears or describes with great faith the pastimes of Lord Krishna, such as his Ras dance with the gopis, the disease of lusty desires in his heart, and the agitation caused by the three modes of material nature are immediately nullified, and he becomes sober and silent. Tasting the transcendental effulgent, sweetly ecstatic love of Krishna, 
such a person can enjoy life 24 hours a day in the transcendental bliss of the sweetness of Krishna's pastimes. A transcendentally sober person who with faith and love continuously hears from a realized soul about the activities of Lord Krishna in his Ras dance with the gopis, or one who describes such activities, can attain full transcendental devotional service at the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus, lusty material desires, which are the heart disease of all materialistic persons, are for him quickly and completely vanquished. If a transcendentally situated person, following in the footsteps of Srila Rupa Goswami, hears and speaks about the Ras Lila dance of Krishna, and is always absorbed in thoughts of Krishna while serving the Lord day and night within his mind, what shall I say about the result? It is so spiritually exalted that it cannot be expressed in words. Such a person is an eternally liberated associate of the Lord, and his body is completely spiritualized. Although he is visible to material eyes, he is spiritually situated, and all his activities are spiritual. By the will of Krishna, such a devotee is understood to possess a spiritual body. Srila Ramananda Roy is situated on the path of spontaneous love of Godhead. Therefore, he is in his spiritual body, and his mind is not materially affected. I also hear topics about Krishna from Ramananda Roy. If you want to hear such topics, go to him again. You can take my name before him, saying, He has sent me to hear about Lord Krishna from you. Go hastily while he is in the assembly room. Hearing this, Pradyumna Mishra immediately departed. Pradyumna Mishra went to Ramananda Roy, who offered him respectful obeisances and said, Please order me, for what purpose have you come? Pradyumna Mishra answered, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has sent me to hear topics about Lord Krishna from you. Hearing this, Ramananda Roy became absorbed in ecstatic love and began to speak with great transcendental pleasure. Following the instruction of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you have come to hear about Krishna. <laughs> this is my great fortune. How else could I get such an opportunity? Saying this, Sri Ramananda Roy took Pradyumna Mishra to a secluded place and inquired from him, What kind of Krishna Kata do you want to hear from me? Pradyumna Mishra replied, Kindly tell me about the same topics you spoke about at Vidyanagara. You are an instructor even for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not to speak of others. But <laughs> I am a beggar Brahmin, and you are my maintainer. I do not know how to inquire, for I do not know what is good and what is bad. Seeing me to be poor in knowledge, kindly speak whatever is good for me by your own goodwill. Thereupon Ramananda Roy gradually began speaking on topics of Krishna. Thus the ocean of the transcendental mellow of those topics became agitated. He began personally posing questions and then answering them with conclusive statements. When afternoon came, the topics still did not end. The speaker and listeners spoke and heard in ecstatic love. Thus they forgot their bodily consciousness. How then could they perceive the end of the day? The servant informed them, The day has already ended. Then Ramananda Roy ended his discourses about Krishna. Ramananda Roy paid great respect to Pradyumna Mishra and bade him farewell. Pradyumna Mishra said, I have become very satisfied. He then began to dance. After returning home, Pradyumna Mishra bathed and ate his meal. In the evening, he came to see the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In great happiness, he worshipped the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Lord inquired, Have you heard topics about Krishna? 
Virginia Mishra said, My dear Lord, you have made me extremely obliged to you because you have drowned me in a nectarian ocean of talks about Krishna. I cannot properly describe the discourses of Ramananda Rai, for he is not an ordinary human being. He is fully absorbed in the devotional service of the Lord. There is one other thing Ramananda Rai said to me. Do not consider me the speaker in these talks about Krishna. Whatever I speak is personally spoken by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Like a stringed instrument, I vibrate whatever he causes me to speak. In this way, the Lord speaks through my mouth to preach the cult of Krishna consciousness. Within the world, who will understand this pastime of the Lord? What I have heard from Ramananda Roy is like a nectarian ocean of discourses about Krishna. Even the demigods, beginning with Lord Brahma, cannot understand all these topics. My dear Lord, you have made me drink this transcendental nectar of Krishna Kata. Therefore I am sold to your lotus feet, life after life. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Ramananda Roy is a source of all humility. Therefore he has attributed his own words to another's intelligence. This is a natural characteristic of those advanced in devotional service. They do not personally speak of their own good qualities. I have described but a fraction of the transcendental attributes of Ramananda Roy as revealed when he instructed Pradyumna Mishra. Although Ramananda Roy was a householder, he was not under the control of the six kinds of bodily change. Although apparently a pounds and shillings man, he advised even persons in the renounced order. To demonstrate the transcendental attributes of Ramananda Roy, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent Pradyumna Mishra to hear discourses about Krishna from him. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, knows very well how to demonstrate the qualities of his devotees. Therefore, acting like an artistic painter, he does so in various ways and considers this his personal profit. There is yet another characteristic of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. O oh, devotees, listen carefully to how he manifests his opulence and characteristics, although they are exceptionally deep. To vanquish the false pride of so-called renunciants and learned scholars, he spreads real religious principles, even through a shudra or low-born fourth-class man. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu preached about devotional service, ecstatic love, and the absolute truth by making Ramananda Roy, a grahasta born in a low family, the speaker. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, the exalted Brahman Sannyasi, and Pradyumna Mishra, the purified Brahman, both became the hearers of Ramananda Roy. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu exhibited the glories of the holy name of the Lord through Haridas Thakur, who was born in a Mohammedan family. Similarly, he exhibited the essence of devotional service through Sanatan Goswami, who had almost been converted into a Mohammedan. The Lord also fully exhibited the ecstatic love and transcendental pastimes of Vrindavan through Srila Rupa Goswami. Considering all this, who can understand the deep plans of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? The activities of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are just like an ocean of nectar. Even a drop of this ocean can inundate all the three worlds. O devotees, relish daily the nectar of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita and the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. For by doing so, one can merge in the transcendental bliss and full knowledge of devotional service. Thus Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, accompanied by his associates, his pure devotees, enjoyed transcendental bliss in Jagannath Puri, preaching the bhakti cult in many ways. A Brahmin from Bengal wrote a drama about the characteristics of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and came with his manuscript to induce the Lord to hear it. 
The Brahmin was acquainted with Bhagavan Acharya, one of the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, after meeting him at Jagannath Puri, the Brahmin made his residence at Bhagavan Acharya's home. First, the Brahmin induced Bhagavan Acharya to hear the drama, and then many other devotees joined Bhagavan Acharya in listening to it. All the Vaishnavas praised the drama, saying, Very good, very good. They also desired for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to hear the drama. Customarily, anyone who composed a song, a verse, literary composition, or poem about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first had to bring it to Svarup Damada Goswami to be heard. If passed by Svarup Damada Goswami, it could be presented for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to hear. If there were a hint that transcendental mellows overlapped in a manner contrary to the principles of the bhakti cult, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would not tolerate it and would become very angry. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would not hear anything before Svarup Damada heard it first. The Lord made this etiquette a regulative principle. Bhagavan Acharya submitted to Svarup Damada Goswami, a good Brahmin has prepared a drama about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that appears exceptionally well composed. First you hear it, and if it is acceptable to your mind, I shall request Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to hear it. Svarup Damada Goswami replied, Dear Bhagavan Acharya, you are a very liberal cowherd boy. Sometimes the desire awakens within you to hear any kind of poetry. In the writings of so-called poets, there is generally a possibility of overlapping transcendental mellows. When the mellows thus go against the conclusive understanding, no one likes to hear such poetry. A so-called poet who has no knowledge of transcendental mellows and the overlapping of transcendental mellows cannot cross the ocean of the conclusions of devotional service. A poet who does not know the grammatical regulative principles who is unfamiliar with metaphorical ornaments, especially those employed in drama, and who does not know how to present the pastimes of Lord Krishna, he is condemned. Moreover, the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are especially difficult to understand. One who has accepted the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as his life and soul can describe the pastimes of Lord Krishna or the pastimes of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hearing the poetry of a person who has no transcendental knowledge and who writes about the relationships between man and woman simply causes unhappiness, whereas hearing the words of a devotee fully absorbed in ecstatic love, well, that causes great happiness. The standard for writing dramas has been set by Rupa Goswami. If a devotee hears the introductory portions of his two dramas, they enhance his transcendental pleasure. Despite the explanation of Svarup Damada, Bhagavan Acharya requested, Please hear the drama once. If you hear it, you can consider whether it is good or bad. For two or three days, Bhagavan Acharya continually asked Svarup Damada Goswami to hear the poetry. Because of his repeated requests, Svarup Damada Goswami wanted to hear the poetry written by the Brahmin from Bengal. Svarup Damada Goswami sat down with other devotees to hear the poetry, and then the poet began to read the introductory verse. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has assumed a golden complexion and has become the soul of the body named Lord Jagannath, whose blooming lotus eyes are widely expanded. Thus he has appeared in Jagannath Puri and brought dull matter to life. May that Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya Deva bestow upon you all good fortune. When everyone present heard the verse, they all commended the poet, but Svarup Damada Goswami requested him, Kindly explain this verse. The poet said, Lord Jagannath is a most beautiful body. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is exceptionally grave, is the owner of that body. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has appeared here in Nilachal to spiritualize the entire dull material world. Hearing this, everyone present was greatly happy, 
But Svarup Damodar, who alone was very unhappy, began to speak in great anger. You are a fool. You have brought ill fortune upon yourself, for you have no knowledge of the existence of the two lords, Jagannath Dev and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, nor have you any faith in them. Lord Jagannath is completely spiritual and full of transcendental bliss, but you have compared him to a dull, destructible body composed of the inert external energy of the Lord. You have calculated Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, full in six opulences, to, to be on the level of an ordinary living being. Instead of knowing him as the Supreme Fire, you have accepted him as, as a spark. Because you have committed an offense to Lord Jagannath and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, <laughs> you will attain a hellish destination. You do not know how to describe the absolute truth, but nevertheless you have tried to do so. Therefore you must be condemned. You are in complete illusion, for you have distinguished between the body and soul of His Lordship, Lord Jagannath or Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That is a very great offense. At no time is there a distinction between the body and soul of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. His personal identity and his body are made of blissful spiritual energy. There is no distinction between them. There is no distinction between the body and soul of the Supreme Personality of Godhead at any time. As it is stated in the Kurma Purana, O oh my Lord, I do not see a form superior to your present form of eternal bliss and knowledge. In your impersonal Brahman effulgence, in the spiritual sky, there is no occasional change and no deterioration of internal potency. I surrender unto you because whereas I am proud of my material body and senses, your Lordship is the cause of the cosmic manifestation, yet you are untouched by matter. And in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Brahma says, this present form, or any transcendental form expanded by the Supreme Personality of Godhead Sri Krishna, is equally auspicious for all the universes. Since you have manifested this eternal personal form upon whom your devotees meditate, I therefore offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Those who are destined to be dispatched to the path of hell, neglect your personal form because of speculating on material topics. Whereas Krishna, the Absolute Truth, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is full of transcendental bliss, possesses all six spiritual opulences in full, and is the master of the material energy, the small conditioned soul, who is always unhappy, is the servant of the material energy. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Supreme Controller, is always full of transcendental bliss and is accompanied by the potencies known as Ladini and Sambit. The conditioned soul, however, is always covered by ignorance and embarrassed by the threefold miseries of life. Thus he is a treasure house of all kinds of tribulations. Hearing this explanation, all the members of the assembly were struck with wonder. Svarup Damodar Goswami has spoken the real truth, they admitted. The Brahmin from Bengal has committed an offense by wrongly describing Lord Jagannath and Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When the Bengali poet heard this chastisement from Svarup Damodar Goswami, he was ashamed, fearful, and astonished. Indeed, being like a duck in a society of white swans, he could not say anything. Seeing the poet's unhappiness, Svarup Damada Goswami, who was naturally very kind-hearted, advised him so that he could derive some benefit. If you want to understand Srimad Bhagavatam, you must approach a self-realized Vaishnav and hear from him. You can do this when you have completely taken shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Associate regularly with the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, for then only will you understand the waves of the ocean of devotional service. Only if you follow the principles of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees will your learning be successful. 
then you will be able to write about the transcendental pastimes of Krishna without material contamination. You have composed this introductory verse to your great satisfaction, but the meaning you have expressed is contaminated by offenses to both Lord Jagannath and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You have written something irregular, not knowing the regulative principles, but the goddess of learning, Sarasvati, has used your words to offer her prayers to the Supreme Lord. Sometimes demons, and even Lord Indra, the King of Heaven, chastise Krishna, but Mother Sarasvati, taking advantage of their words, offered prayers to the Lord. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Indra said, This Krishna, who is an ordinary human being, is talkative, childish, impudent, and ignorant, although he thinks himself very learned. The cowherd men in Vrindavan have offended me by accepting him. This has not been greatly appreciated by me. Indra, the king of heaven, being too proud of his heavenly opulences, became like a madman. Thus bereft of his intelligence, he could not restrain himself from speaking nonsensically about Krishna. Thus Indra thought, I have properly chastised Krishna and defamed him. But Sarasvati, the goddess of learning, took this opportunity to offer prayers to Krishna. The word vachala is used to refer to a person who can speak according to Vedic authority. And the word valisa means innocent. Krishna spoke the Vedic knowledge, yet he always presents himself as a prideless, innocent boy. When there is no one else to receive obeisances, one may be called Anamra, or one who offers obeisances to no one. This is the meaning of the word Stabda. And because no one is found to be more learned than Krishna, he may be called Agya, indicating that nothing is unknown to him. The word Panditamani can be used to indicate that Krishna is honored even by learned scholars. Nevertheless, because of affection for his devotees, Krishna appears like an ordinary human being and may therefore be called Martya. The demon Jarasandha chastised Krishna, saying, You are the lowest of human beings. I shall not fight with you, for you killed your own relatives. Mother Sarasvati takes Purushadama to mean Purushottama, he to whom all men are subordinate. Nations or Maya may be called Bandhu because she entangles everyone in the material world. Therefore, by using the word Bandhu Han, Mother Sarasvati says that Lord Krishna is the vanquisher of Maya. Shishupal also blasphemed Krishna in this way, but the goddess of learning, Sarasvati, offered her prayers to Krishna even by his words. In that way, although your verse is blasphemous according to your meaning, Mother Sarasvati has taken advantage of it to offer prayers to the Lord. There is no difference between Lord Jagannath and Krishna, but here Lord Jagannath is fixed as the absolute person appearing in wood, therefore he does not move. Thus Lord Jagannath and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, although appearing as two, are one because they are both Krishna who is one alone. The supreme desire to deliver the entire world meets in both of them, and for that reason also they are one and the same. To deliver all the materially contaminated people of the world, the same Krishna has descended, moving as Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. By visiting Lord Jagannath, one is freed from material existence, but not all men of all countries can come or be admitted here in Jagannath Puri. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, however, moves from one country to another, personally or by his representative. Thus, he, as the moving Brahman, delivers all the people of the world. Thus I have explained the meaning intended by Mother Sarasvati, the goddess of learning. It is your great fortune that you have described Lord Jagannath and Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in that way. Sometimes it so happens that one who wants to chastise Krishna utters the holy name, and thus the holy name becomes the cause of his liberation. Upon hearing the proper explanation by Svarup Damada Goswami, the Bengali poet fell down at the feet of all the devotees and took shelter of them with a straw in his mouth.
Thereupon all the devotees accepted his association. Explaining his humble behavior, they introduced him to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. By the mercy of the devotees of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that poet from Bengal gave up all other activities and stayed with them at Jagannath Puri. Who can explain the mercy of the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? I have thus described the narration concerning Pradyumna Mishra and how, following the order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he listened to discourses about Krishna spoken by Ramananda Roy. Within the narration, I have explained the glorious characteristics of Sri Ramananda Roy, through whom Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally described the limits of ecstatic love for Krishna. In the course of the narration, I have also told about the drama by the poet from Bengal. Although he was ignorant because of his faith and humility, he nevertheless obtained the shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The pastimes of Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are the essence of nectar. From the stream of one of his pastimes flow hundreds and thousands of branches. Anyone who reads and hears these pastimes with faith and love can understand the truth about devotional service, devotees and the transcendental mellows of the pastimes of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Praying at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath, always desiring their mercy, I, Krishna Das, narrate Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita following in their footsteps. This ends Chapter 5 of the Antilila. Ramananda Roy instructs Pradyumna Mishra. <laughs>